Hey everybody and welcome back to another replay cast. Once more we have Nick the Man versus Talbot, who is now Major Talbot. Um, a very, I was told that this this is a very good, a very 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 exciting replay, even sort of a meme possibly. I don't know, we'll see. Uh, we have Talbot playing Commonwealth. Yes, he decided to do that himself, and Nick the Man playing. Red for motorized. Now, red for motorized at first glance might sound, I don't know, weak. It doesn't have, you know, access to the KTs, wield auto cannons at all. You only get KBVTs. You don't have something like AMX 10s, you know. So, it doesn't have access to these tools. However, the way Nick the Man plays it is essentially an airborne deck, right? He relies on MTVs, the MR24K to spot for things, 25Ts, stuff like that. So it's more similar, at least the way he plays it, more similar to, you know, an airborne deck with a stronger ground presence. Or maybe different ground presence, because Red for Airborne has actually a pretty strong ground presence. But that's a different story. Um, so yeah, we have Nick the Man playing Red for Motorized, that especially on this map should be pretty strong the way he plays it, you know. A lot of open fields, so stuff like the 25T, etc. MI-17s can do a lot of work. Commonwealth traditionally not only is it bad in general these days in in one versus ones right in team games it's actually not that bad in one versus ones it is relatively bad because of how slow and clunky it is and how you very often need multiple units to fill a role that these days in most meta decks can't be filled by a single unit and so it's fairly awkward just you know yeah um, and on top of that. It struggles against, you know, air heavy decks, um, especially two armor planes like the 2050, like the A10, because the anti air used by Commonwealth tends to have a fairly low HE output. Now, the track rape here has 5 HE, for example. It is a very good AA piece versus basically any plane except for two armor, right? Against two armor, you actually need high HE. Um, so, th that track rape here will need to hit a 2050 five times. At a two armor spot to kill it, right? So, yeah. And yeah, so let's, uh, let's go on. Talbot started with two Challenger 2s, and two Lynx H7s with, with presumably SBS in them. Warrior 90, interesting choice. Challenger Marksman. Now, Marksman is gonna fare pretty well against MI 17s, but. It'll still get stunned. It'll it won't die to rocket bots up front, but it, it'll get stunned for sure. Uh, here we have some VDC 89s, Eto 90, Tab 71, which which presumably carries Brutska Pesh, uh, Mustis. They're on elite. Um, do they carry? You don't get Panzer Jäger. They're not available in motorized. They have to be... Ah, I know what they are. They are Karatiniakari, the 15 man squads. I have Apollo here, is Um Let's just see what happens. Wolverine as well. Very brave of him to start with one of these. Don't tend to fare too well offensively against helicopters in the opening. Lynx H7, Saxon. With uh, That's gonna carry... Green Jacket, that's their name. The UK Shock Squads. Mortar opening, of course, for the town, the block line of sight. The usual stuff. So cool, should have, should have no problem. I'm, I'm sorry once more for not turning this off. So cool, should have no problem dealing with links, as you saw. So that's the one SPS on drain, and of course the transport links of the HQ section. It's very annoying because links are of course very useful to have, just like MS-17s. So getting a lot of value of them, out of them, like multiple rounds. Firing them and resupplying them. Wolverine 62% hits with misses the first two, so it won't be able to kill the 25k with the salvo, but gets a crit, so stunning and panicking did Emma 24k. But of course, Wolverine has to reload and now got wrecked by the MTV, or at least stunned. Challenger Marksman, unfortunately, though, arrives in time. Commandos are gonna get caught out in the open, and the Karatin Yakari should have no problem finishing this off. Saxon. Getting spotted here. Milan once in the town. Milan once in general. 
I say it all the time, low and ATGM is very useful to have, especially as well against a mono deck that, ten that tends to be fairly light. Can I just say that the sound of the Cardinacri firing is incredibly loud, even when you zoom out? F111C. Not doing that much damage, really, but it does get out of life with no damage, so... That's good. Only uh, E290 here, Crotal, doesn't have the best anti-plane range, but given that it's a non-radar AA piece, a very good range though. The Crotal, the normal Crotal has uh, 2625. Challenger 2 is still gonna be unmatched here, and um, even the Brutzka Bash are not gonna do that much damage to the side of it, right? They're gonna deal, I believe, 2.5 damage. So they will foreshot it to the side, but it will need quite some damage. Compared to a Leclerc that has only 7 side armor. There is a 25T downwarded, so there will be a second one available. That's always... If you see something like a 25T... Um, well, most notably the 25T really pay attention to the veterancy. It's one of the few planes, I guess, where... There's not necessarily a consensus whether you should up or down, but it is very often down to the playstyle of the player and the deck. For example, in USSR, you don't really need a second one. But once again, it kind of depends on how you play. But I think in a deck like this, motor deck, where you also only have five planes available maximum, like five plane slots, you might want to down with it simply because you can't fit that many other anti-tank planes into your deck. In any case, the town goes to Nick, but at what cost, right? <laughs> Talbot still has two Challenger 2s. Also, I should have mentioned this early on, this is ranked, so I'm fairly certain none of the players like neither Nick nor Tal, but 100% knew what they were up against. They might have guessed, but they didn't quite know for certain, that is sure. So the Challenger 2s, while they are of course quite a wall for Nick, um, for Talbot, maybe a bit overkill having two of them. Um, I think against the Moto deck, especially Red Moto, which might not necessarily run the 27M or the Syria, a Challenger 2 might be quite good, because the 25T does have quote-unquote only 26 AP, right? It will need 4 shots to kill his kills, the Challenger Marksman. I oh, didn't pay attention, so it must have been damaged. That thing has 15 armor, right, front? So it must have been damaged before, maybe by the Blitzka patch there. 25T gets out alive. Did you see that? It showed 2 HP, took a aim 9 and still survived. That is crazy. Uh, the aim 9 would deal 1.6 damage. So, presumably, well, it has a minimum H, uh, HP of 0 0.4, but it might have a bit more. Um, keep, you have to keep in mind that the HP shown in the below uh, doesn't mean that there's only... You can have HP between 9 and 10, for example. But if you take any bit of damage, it will just show 9 points. Supply drug being destroyed to deny the... Repairs here, F 11 c coming in once again. But this Kapesha gonna be out in the open now, but the Challenger 2 stone the line of sight would have been a very nice... Would have been a lot of damage. They were all uh, bunched up together and they deal 4 AG, so they would do a good amount of damage to those Britska, but luckily they get back in. The Congress M, I presume, or AT Gem squad in general, denied to be put in there. PTC is just sitting here, they can't really do much. They would barely survive a shot at the maximum range of a Challenger 2, but there's the 27M. Um, no line of sight though for Nick the man. One M113 dies to track Rapier, misses, Tornado of 2 misses, track Rapier, hits, Tornado, hits as well, that's massive, that is huge. Um, because 27M is of course the by far the biggest threat. As strong as the 25T is, the Challenger 2 is significantly more sturdy, more survivable against the 25T than other um, tanks or super heavies even. So as long as you have some small ground, you, in most cases, should be available to get it back into safety if the 25T shows itself. So you can most certainly tank one, maybe even two shots, unless you're like very, very low. I mean, technically speaking, you can definitely tank three shots, but you have to keep in mind there's, of course, also the heat gun of the 2050. Those helicopters are still sitting back there doing nothing. Especially now, they could definitely... There, there's now quite a window to use them, because there's only the track rape here. Now the Challenger 2 uh, marksman is coming in. Because track rape here, of course, has very, very bad anti-helicopter range. Getting outranged by the... There's no MS-17, yeah. MS-17 rocket pods outrange the track rape here, actually. 
So this is a very interesting conundrum, I guess you could say. And Nick Demand does have sort of control of the town. Talbot has control of the open. He has to be really careful that those bullets can patch with the 1400 meter range. Don't like get some nasty side shots. No, 11 armor, 11 side armor is quite a lot. The only unit that has more side armor is the Chimera. But it's still it still takes significant damage from those 15 AP rounds used by the Baritska Pesh. PTC 89 is trying to reroute into here so, so they have more cover. As, as nice as you know these bushes are, they're of course not very deep, right? So a squad here or there will easily spot them unless there's smoke. Deep Forest of course allows you to retreat further into cover. Wolverine trying to sneak around here. Um, this is probably the best way to use a Wolverine, sort of. Um, you don't really want to go head on against a helicopter. You want to shoot them into the side because otherwise what happens is you get one missile off. You know, if you look straight into towards a helicopter and that helicopter also looking in your direction. You get one missile off, get spotted, rocket pod stun and kill you, bam, done. Um, that's why the Wolverine is more of a support AA piece. And it is very good at that, you know. People tend to, Maya is vastly underrate the Wolverine, but I think they also just misunderstand it. Also, as you can see, doesn't quite have the best autonomy. Um, only 400 kilometers. Of course, it's a time... That's a timer, not actually a range stat. Um, and it does have good off-road speed, so the 400 kilometers isn't that bad. But still, you can say it's starting to run out of fuel. But of course, I think, or I assume what Talbot might be thinking here is placing it here, so that whenever a 2015 might circle around here, you could get the nasty shot off, lucky shot off. Or of course, you know, if you're placing it in here, some shots on the helicopters. Are they actually spotted? They are, but there's of course no 27M anymore. You're again now being called out. Mortars getting ready. Of course, easily panicking and stunning the Challenger 2s. Tab 71. Oh, is he gonna get one of the FVs? Before the warrior kills it. And FV is gonna try to run away. And the warrior. Yep, deals with it. Um, you know, warrior, the, the the best thing about a warrior is just its armor. The auto cannon is, it's it's good enough. It's perfectly serviceable to deal with stuff like that. And with the armor, the actually has actually has a very good survivability against you know other IFVs at longer ranges. But as soon as you get into short ranges, the, the horrible rate of fire is just gonna, it's just gonna, yeah, catch up on you. It's uh, the downside of the this unit. So it's not screw from some optic, more Brutska Pesh, I presume. But uh, I don't know if like just feeding into the town is a, is a good idea. For now, of course, Nick has been invading the F-111Cs, right? Or the one F-111C. But what if, the, what if there is another one coming or if he doesn't quite, isn't able to evade them, right? And if he has soul stuff here, he can't evade with all of it. So I'm not sure if that's the best, uh, best idea. On the other hand, what else would Nick do, right? His ground game is pretty weak and dealing with challenges now that he has no 27M left. It's gonna be tough. Challenger 2 is just happy sitting here. But those PTCs are not in range, so they will just happily shoot at those Canadian rifles and commandos. They're now panicked and shaken. But more stuff being fed here. I would really like to see some smoke coming out here, which, yeah, happening right now. But it's still quite a bit late. They got a lot of shots of those PTCs. And we have 10 RPM auto loaded, by the way. That's nothing to be underestimated. And you're gonna, of course, coming right in with the rocket pods. It's the second you're gonna actually. F111C, I was talking about it. Does some good damage. And gets out alive. Damage, though. You only got one hit on it with the 6 HE. You're gonna, once again, coming in. Stunning, panicking some stuff. But not doing that much damage. But all, most of the infantry here did get dealt with. And the PTCs are still just fine. Unless, yep, there goes one. Uh, so this wasn't quite max range, or maybe this one was damaged, but PTC is dead. And so is the tab. Shall need not the ants, but some screw here. m 4 k just sitting here, trying to get a line of sight. Yep, it's the 25T coming out. Might still be repairing, it was very low on HP, of course.
put a skill patch missing, but of course we'll deal only one damage at the front of the armor of a challenger too. It's still some damage, but the challenge here is to marksman, which also will only get that. I think it will actually take 1.5 damage. In any case, not a whole lot of damage by the put a patch. Um, and of course the high front armor means it can be quite offensively used, but it doesn't actually carry that much ammo. I think only something like 69 shots. Um, which for a normal spec is fine, but if you actually actively use this offensively as the direct fire support, you can actually run out of this fairly quickly. Because you tend to be able to shoot at ground units a lot longer than you are at, the, at your typical anti-air unit. There's the 2050. Presumably the same one. I wasn't taking I wasn't looking at the name. And there's the Wolverine. Oh, oh is, is this this would actually be hilarious. It actually got three shots off. I wasn't paying attention what it shot at, if it was maybe something shooting at there earlier, if it shot down one of the Sokus. I am not a hundred percent certain. Let's see. Just gotta keep in mind for now it has currently nine missiles. Nick Mine also got a CV here, so taking with the plus one. Neither player really sneaking around outside of this Wolverine. And uh, yeah, Talbot has like no base defense. Of course, as long as his tornado is circling, he would easily spot a helicopter sneaking around. But Nick does have access to like a lot of Peter 80s, Peter 70s, and the like. Could fairly easily sneak one around. And given that he buys two Type 71s here, maybe that's his plan, or maybe he just wants to get them in here. It's also a very strong position, especially with the um, the range on those Fritzka Pesh. 1400 meters could definitely get some shots into reinforcing stuff there. Oh, that's that's a nasty shot on the Challenger One. Challenger One offensively is just uh, not not the best tank. You know, if if you get in such a situation where you're low HP, that bad off-road speed is really starting to catch up. And the low RPM means that every shot counts. And especially against medium tanks or like even lighter tanks where you only have 17 AP given your price, that low RPM means that you uh, you just very often can't finish them off before the enemy tank can get into cover. Um, so for situations like these, not a big fan. HQ section here. I don't think it's gonna get spotted. It didn't get spotted, but a helo did. So if Nick pays attention and sees that there's a Lynx at this veterancy landing here, he knows that there's gonna be an infantry CV. Because, keep in mind, he did kill the other Lynx that came with the HQ section at the start. And hasn't seen the Lynx ever since. There's a 250 again. Pretty sure that's the same one. You're against firing. Oh, 25 is gonna fly. Oh. It's a side shot. It missed. That's a, that's a rear shot. Okay, it, it hit one. It dealt two damage. Tornado 2 did not get hit by the Eton 90, also not by the 25T. This tornado. Not getting hit at all, neither the Osas. Those tornadoes just evaded all those missiles. Jesus Christ, five Osas and like a two or three Eto-90 missiles all missed by the looks of it. Maybe the F-111C that I believe was bombing as well took a bit of damage, but I was just too focused on the Wolverine. Man, those AA pieces are garbage. I mean, they're not garbage, but they were really unlucky here. Like, also AK is by no means a high-end AA piece, but there are two of them and they're upvetted, and you have the Eto-90, which is also upvetted. Very unlucky for Nick. Challenger 2 is just going forward because there's nothing that can like really counter them. At the same time though, Talbot's supporting units right, get killed all the time, so he can't really do too much with those challenge twos either, right? Both players just kind of stuck. Nick can't really push out because of the challenge twos, but Talbot just can't really push further because all the supporting stuff, all the infantry, all the light vehicles constantly get killed by Nick's stuff. Look at this PDC, it's out of fucking ammo. You don't see that every day. A lot of value out of that thing. Now I wonder... Nick must, yeah, I think he he noticed the Wolverine firing here. He certainly must have. So that's why he's sending the 24k. But if he's not if he's not on the perfect trajectory, the Wolverine might actually be able to kill it because he's shooting into his side. The Yakby should be able to fire. Oh, and ooh, this is a bad angle for yeah yeah. It was also an attack move, so it took a while for the Yakby to aim to fire to get the angle, and it was enough time for the Wolverine to kill this unit. Very unlucky. I mean, maybe not unlucky. That's how it should be, but. Believe, believe it or not, that's actually not how it, go, how it goes all the time. Um, but this is the problem with attack moves sometimes. If we try to hunt down units like this, the M124K, which 
really looked like it was an attack move. The moment it spotted the Wolverine, it decelerated, right? And then the front of the plane the helicopter immediately went up, and that meant that the Yak-B couldn't immediately fire. It had to get the angle first, or wait for the front of the plane to go down before it could fire or continue to fire the Wolverine. And of course, the Yak, um, as good as it is, at that range doesn't have the same damage output as like an auto cannon with the kinetic AP scaling. Once again, no damage from the OSA case. Um, as like auto cannons with AP would like very quickly kill this. Although it does have two front and two sides, so maybe not that quickly. Um, but yeah, two front and two sides probably also massively helped here, reducing the damage and suppression coming in from the Yak B. So I don't underestimate this little shit. Milan here, very sneaky, actually hitting this shot. It was up with it, uh, on the lead, presumably before and already. Also called French, how fitting. Um, the Mustis should be able to find this, uh, get the line of sight here. Will, of course, one shot, not like it matters. The Wolverine can't. It can shoot back with DMG because the Musti only has one armor, but most certainly will not do a whole lot of damage. Oh, this, they might actually just barely miss each other. Oh, no. And presumably Nick doesn't... Oh, they had a very brief... But Nick might have missed it. They're stopping, they're stopping. Nope, they're, they're continuing. Oh, no. This is very unfortunate for Nick. Britska has definitely got some side shots in here. For sure, given how low the Trencher is. Two Trencher ones now against PTCs. One missed. But only one PTC is hit shooting as well. To Nick's detriment. There we go. F111C getting hit once. Getting hit once. Look look at how much ammo they shot. They, they didn't kill a single plane thus far. I mean the Eton ID was out of ammo for a while already. 25T get hit, got hit once into the two armor. None of the tornadoes got hit by MiG-29. I wasn't even sure if it shot at all. Um, but yeah, Nick is probably just doesn't know the Wolverine is out of fuel. And it's hard to know, right? You need to spot... You can't see if the enemy unit is out of fuel because even though you don't see the actual fuel number, um, if you look at the fuel at the bottom, you still see the color. It's still colored for you even though it says question mark, question mark, question mark. So if it's a red question mark or three red question marks, you know it's out of fuel. But Nick, of course, didn't spot it for a whole long, uh, very long time, only very briefly when the 24K was trying to kill it and got killed in return. So unless you... Took, uh, took a look at the Wolverine at that point, he doesn't know it's out of fuel, so for him, it could be like anywhere right now. F111C got out with no damage because there was no... There were no missiles left, of course. Uh, but yeah, Talbot just grinding him down with planes and artillery and most notably planes that just won't die. Change 1. At this range, of course, very good against the PTCs because with the low front armor, Challenger 2 should have no issue killing it. But one of them actually killing one of the low HP Challenger because that one was busy shooting it at tab 71. And it's still busy, and of course, with the low RPM. Oh, that's a side shot on the Maxus for sure. But the other one finishes off the PTC. Not necessarily a horrible trade for Nick, points wise. Positioning wise, not so great. Those cards in Yakari not particularly good against vehicles unless it gets side shots, of course. Ace 90 trying to finish off the E290. But that's something I'm not a huge fan of the Ace 90. For one versus ones, it just doesn't have the burst length. The rate of fire of the Ace 90, of the burst, is very high, of course. But it only shoots three rounds before having to re reload for 30 seconds again. And so a single Ace 90 has to be really lucky to actually be able to finish off an, uh, like any kind of unit unless it's like a two man squad. Um, or maybe a 5 HP squad, something like that. But uh, quite lucky to kill an E290 because it just only th shoots three rounds. And if the opponent is half what, uh, half decent, half what, half decent, uh, they're just gonna move the E290 the moment they notice the Ace 90 is shooting at them. So here we go again. It's a rear shot. That's a side shot. Oh, it's stunned. It's still stunned. Uh, low veterancy means it uh, has a much longer stun recovery time but still it just incapacitated the 25t for like the next i don't know couple of minutes challenger 2 still just happily sitting there and the commandos only drove into the town because nick wasn't reinforcing or rather uh talbot just kept grinding him down and of course with the tanks here forced nick to also invest into here as well change the maxus has got panicked i presume by a Eurogan strike once again sorry for not fully paying attention but looking at these impact marks definitely looks like a Eurogan. oh and those moose with a 16 ap heat definitely dealing some 
Not insignificant damage should max us, even up front, but only, well, quote unquote, only 14 front armor. So if we're in here still with one mess, I'd have definitely paid for itself. I mean, obviously with the 24k kill, but honestly, even even just delaying the 25t for a couple of minutes as well, and of course, forcing Nick to, kind of forcing Nick to deal with this, already worth the 35 points. Yeah, do you see those tab 71s? That I'm pretty sure they're gonna drive back here, though. I think, oh, maybe they're not. not. Nick should probably just get to uh, some of these BTRs and just shift attack, move them through this forest here. Because he knows it's still there. He doesn't probably know it's out of fuel, like I said, but he should definitely try to deal with this. Though, it, of course, it also has only one, one missile left. But that thing has been very good for Talbot. And, of course, Commandos 90 in the town. The town is now in Talbot's hands. The fob. Oh, more over, over halfway done, but we are also just over halfway through. CV being bought for Foxtra to counter the tick from Nick. SBS definitely gonna lose against those Kartinyakari. What you have to keep in mind is those Kartinyakari, their SMGs actually have elite rate of fire, right? Um, the 400 RPM is not true, they actually have the same rate of fire as SBS on their SMGs. They have, have of course 30 instead of 40% accuracy, but still crazy rate of fire. And of course with the veterancy bonus and uh, range scaling, their DPS, especially in towns, is actually very, very good. And F11 is just finishing them off. AS90 trying to snipe the CV. I have to get a bit lucky, but if Nick doesn't move it, it shouldn't shouldn't take too long. It's also up with it, so Talbot only gets one. Yeah, I, I don't know. Not a fan. I think um, if you use the AS90 in one versus ones, I would probably down with it. Because I, you really kind of need to, in my eyes. But maybe it's just personal preference. Giant Jet 2 is still just sitting here. Being... Just being Jet 2s, right? Them just sitting there, of course, means it's that's a huge wall for Nick. Finally, those AA pieces are gonna get resupplied. That's really... That's honestly the biggest deal. The problem of not having a town is not necessarily... You know, not having it. It's just that resupplying your stuff here takes so much longer. Same for the other side, of course. It's really the information that the sound gives and, you know, the area kind of denies. There's two more tab 71s and another two trying to sneak around here. Finally, there's some base defense. I presume this one is also going to probably stop here. Let me see, trying to get those mustis. Um, obviously, it's a bit tough to do, but if you have nothing else to do with the F111Cs and you kind of know this is going to be safe from AA, why not, right? Oh, Charity is very aggressive here. W once again, right, with the 27M dead, Talbot can't afford to be very, very aggressive. And the thing is, even the Congress M side shot will not kill a full HP Charlie 2. Three more PTCs. Probably one of the worst units for to deal with the Charlie 2. Can't even pen it at max range. You need to be at uh, 19, 25 meters to be able to actually shoot at the front armor of this thing. And at that range, the Charity will definitely one-shot you. Oh my god, they all missed. <laughs> Seed, not hitting, nice micro. F111C, Tornado, let's see, Edo 90 and also AKs. Edo 90 hit the Voodoo, F111C did not get hit. And F111C gets out alive. Once more. I'm pretty sure Nick is very annoyed at this point, at his AA just doing virtually nothing. Oh, and they're gonna drive into Warrior... Well, one Warrior 90 here, presumably. CV is still alive, but... This time around, it's Nick losing all of his supporting units, most notably the infantry. Those planes are really, in a quite literal way, killing Nick. So he really has to resort to underhanded tactics. 25T coming on once more. Is the, is the last javelin gonna be used here? Oh, man. I wonder if Nick is trying to actually bait the missiles on purpose here with the two armor. Or maybe he's just trying to bait the tornado F2s. Or maybe both. Let's see. Wolverine shoots. This might be a side shot again. It's not a side shot, but it does get a, does it is a crit. So it does three damage at least. Tornado F2s. Oh my goodness. I mean one of the OSA AK side. It's it finally hit. There we go, but you're gonna die. 
And the Mictor Nines, I believe, were still shooting at the other tornado that just died, so they will won't be able to potentially hit that one. Um, but finally, one of the tornadoes is dead. But the F 11 Cs are still alive. The seat plane is still alive. And of course, one more tornado. And there could be another card of ASFs in Talbot's deck. He might run the Eurofighter as well, specifically against like two armor planes, but I don't know. I'm not for I'm not sure. MTVs. I think those are the first MTVs that definitely gonna carry VDV90. You do get them in the motorized, just in helicopters only. No ground transports for those. PDC definitely gonna finish up those warriors. Yeah, even on the open field, those two warriors didn't really do a whole lot of damage to Brutska Pesh. There's the F111C. E290 is still alive. Oh my god, I hate I hate this. I hate when this happens. When you zoom in and it automatically logs onto a unit. CV does get killed. Look at look at where the bomb dropped and where the CV got killed. Oh, and the second one just kills oh, everything else. Those F111s are so devastating. Make 29. Dies. Wow. Th those planes, Talbot's planes, on, there we go, there's the Typhoon. Talbot's planes have been doing so much work for him. It's crazy. And they've, they've also been like immensely lucky, right? Those also AKs, those Eto 9s just failing to shoot down those F 11s, those tornadoes. Very rough. But there's still two Buddhist Capesh that at the moment Talbot is not aware of. He probably will be before this M577 is gonna move into the zone. Which is lucky timing for him. Also, oh, four lynxes here. Where did they, where did he go get all these lynxes from? We need like an SBS here. I'm I didn't fully pay attention where he got all those lynxes from, because he lost both or at least one of the ones with the CV. The, the two he started in the opening, he definitely lost. <laughs> this is so cool. He spotted the Wolverine, but it's now out of ammo, of course. But those super dispatch easy dream with those, those commandos and the links. That's an F line of sight by the looks of it. Otherwise, it would definitely fire. See, we still being moved in though. This, I mean, I guess if the links is, ah, it's gonna be spicy though. The links could hover here, and the moment the Britska patch fired, it probably gets spotted and killed. But if both of the Britska patch fire at once and hit at the same time, the M five seven seven is just that. There we go. Finally, line of sight, and one of the Britska patch dies. Two more here sneaking around. They did get discovered briefly or fired briefly, presumably against one of those M113s. Should be able to kill those uh, that AS90 there. What do we have? More planes coming out. Yep, gonna definitely gonna go for those VDV90. Lynx H7 dies. Fusilier is probably gonna deal with it so cool since it has no armor. Not quite. Line infantry squads. Not the best DPS. And completely missing the VDV90, not taking into account that they're gonna move forward. Uh, SLFPC is just coming in as the Britska patch just killed the AS90. That's nice for Nick, but I think at this point the AS90 is not gonna be uh, the biggest problem anyway. F111C tries to bomb, but it's way too close to the air spawn, so it can't get the angle. Also, AK is moving in, but being forgotten by Nick, or just taking a weird. Reinforcement route, so they just drive into H7s and H32. Presumably bought it for some area here, but or obviously wanted them to move this way. But since the fastest way is actually down the road, I forgot to micro them and they just died. Unfortunate, but it's all mistake. Finally, the F111C drops the bombs and kills the Britska Pesh. Points wise, certainly worth it for Nick, but. Is it gonna be enough? Presumably not. Those two J2s are still alive. There's a are those two 25Ts? Two 25Ts. <laughs> uh, let's let's see what's going on. There, there's a smoke coming in fairly late, but once again, J2s don't care. And the 25Ts not being the fastest, of course, and the mortar so being so close to the J2. Go one 25T actually dead. The other one, tornado also dies. Look Look at how long it flew over the, dra the rape, and it just ate the missile from the rapier, right? Those things are so fucking tanky. It's actually kind of fucked up. Eurofighter clearly not ready, otherwise it would have come out and helped as well. But one of the 25Ts is dead, the other one on 1 HP. Not gonna, once again, not, not seen for quite a while here. Am I MTV here? No AA in this immediate area. More helicopters here. But helper ticking and any moment now gonna overtake 
Nick's uh, Congress points. It's gonna be in the lead in a second. Nick has to be within 10%. Or rather, I believe, um, I always forget which way this measured, if you have to be within 10%, as in like, you know, assuming Talbot, okay, what I'm trying to say here is, you have to be within 10% uh, of the leading player to have a draw and not a loss, right? I'm, I always forget if this means that if Talbot has 200 points, if you need to be between 180 and 200 to win, or if it means that your Congress points as the losing player plus 10% have to be, um, you know, Nick at, at Talbot's uh, Congress points. Meaning that 180, 10% is 18, would be 198, which would not be enough. But I think it's just, you know, within the 10% range of the leading players, so 10% of Talbot's Congress points, which in this case would be 114, <laughs> I think. Rounding up, of course. Uh, but... I mean, Nick just killed one of the CVs with the Eurogun, but that was clearly just a desperation move. I'm 24 k coming in to get some line of sight, but I'm not sure how much it's gonna do for him. Because the 25T is dead, yeah, the other 25T is on 1 HP, and the 27M is also dead. And I don't think he has the strongest helicopters, right? You get like M24 VPs, maybe Gazelle Hots. Uh, they're not gonna be able to deal with the Challenger 2, let alone stop them really. Typhoon sniping a... S that was a Salamandra? Was, or Saku? I think it was a Salamandra because it fired 80 GMs. Or it looked like it. Maybe it was just a Saku. I haven't seen a Salamandra all game, and given that he has 25k, it was just a Saku, I, I presume. Shani's moving up here. Definitely good to deal with those Milan ones, they've been annoying very for quite a while, and also, of course, gave... Uh, Talbot's a nice line of sight. More with three Wolverines here. I think a good call because he was actually quite lacking AA coverage in this area, but there's also a challenge marksman, so maybe it is kind of overkill. This Wolverine has the panic symbol. This is sometimes a bug where it got stunned or panicked and then it just keeps flashing that way, even though it's not panicked anymore. I don't know what causes it, but yeah, that's just how it is. All of those mortars are actually out. I think Talbot might be resupplying them, and I guess why not, since he has no Ace-90 anymore. I think it's Ace-7 finish off another infantry squad, presumably. Yeah, Nick tried to smoke here so they can move across the open, but too late. MTV getting caught out by the marksman. And just very little coverage here in Alpha from his end. Jurgen's trying to fire again, but they're reloading. I think this is more or less done now. Actually, I don't know. Talbot has to be quite aggressive here. F-11C coming in, trying to bomb. Yeah, this should be on point. Jurgen trying to kill this. It's gonna get it. has to be a bit lucky. Two front and two side means it will not take full damage. There you can see, hit front or side and only took two, took two damage from those rockets. Also not quite on target. He's firing in this area. So yeah, CV here died, Talbot taking plus one. Um, there's gonna be some helicopters and some CPTUs trying to rush down here. There is no AA here at the moment. <laughs> More CPTUs, MTV also flying around here. Commander Snyder, the, the Commander Snyder that Talbot had here earlier from those two assets just sitting here. Challenger once, I don't know what they were doing. They were about to turn around, but I guess they're not anymore. Links 3 being bought, so Talbot spots this. Links 3, of course, has stingers. But it is a very expensive anti-air helicopter. You get 4 A stingers on a 6 HP helicopter for 100 points. Links 37 is also being moved in. Presumably, well, for one, of course, you'd be used, but I assume also just to stop MTVs, right? Or, like, be meat shields, in, in a sense. If they are on attack move, which they aren't. CV is not quite spotted yet. Links 3 coming in. Definitely should. Yeah, okay. They won't be able to kill the 24k anymore. Kills 2 MTVs though. 25T is already repaired again. I mean, it's 5 to 6 minutes since that happened. HQ section is getting spotted. Did get stunned by those 2 MGs of the M113. You're a fighter, busy with the 25T. Oh, 
But Eurofighter also has missile left, of course. 1 HP, 24k. Finishes off the CV, but Talbot is already in the lead and Nick Diamond is not ticking. More CPTUs coming. Those are the ones that Nick bought for this area. Nothing happening down here. Milan 2 just killed something. Or Milan killed something. Uh, but this is not enough because Nick also doesn't have a CV for Delta. CV getting killed by the F-111C. Challenge 2 is just pushing up presumably to stop a potential CV that might want to move in there. And she wants as well. But yeah, in the end it came down it really came down to the planes. The 27M just getting shit on the in its first run where it did nothing. I mean killed an uh, killed a five pointer. The F one eleven C's and the tornadoes just never dying. <laughs> but there's another Wolverine in the same spot at the moment. It's hilarious. The Wolverine here just shutting down the 25 the 25T just constantly getting shut down. But then again, I'm not sure if the 25T would have really dealt that much. Because I think Nick didn't have enough air presence against ground game. The 25T alone is not enough. He didn't have seat planes as well. Not enough helicopters. And of course, the constant smoke by Talbot just made it very hard as well. But yeah, it's it's... It's the planes. It was the planes in this game. And planes are probably the most frustrating type of units, both when using and, you know, being used against you. Because they're kind of... They're often very binary, right? It's not like in, in super heavy tank engagements where you, like, take and receive damage, like, you know, two or three, you know. It's just, you know, where you just... Chip of damage, you know, super heavy versus super heavy is really chip of damage against each other. And it's fairly, it's reasonably predictable. Uh, not very, and there's of course always crits and whatnot, but it's some, it's predictable enough, in, at least in my eyes. And even against like, if, if you have like 84 A's hunting down medi other mediums and forests, the accuracy and such is so high that this once again just kind of predictable, you know. You kind of know, or should there's an M84A against my medium tank, my medium tank is slower, not auto-loaded, I'm gonna lose. In like 9 of 10 cases. Planes being essentially always two-tapped or something, same as like tanks against ATGM planes being two-tapped, very binary because either it's very often just does it survive or does it not survive. Something in between fairly rarely matters um, or doesn't matter nearly as much as it might be in ground versus ground unit engagements. So it can be just very frustrating. And, you know, the, the outcome of something hitting or not is a lot more important than it is. In, in ground units very often uh, and yeah this I think this was very noticeable here so yeah finally enough the, the the deck that actually kind of relies on on planes couldn't make use out of them I mean but it kind of shows that having only four planes which look like four planes right MiG-29, 25T and 27M which is actually only three cards they um just didn't do a whole lot I don't know if Nick has a fourth playing card that we didn't see, but yeah. And the, and the, the other dress of the ground game just wasn't strong enough for Nick. Jelly 2s were just a wall that he couldn't overcome, so he couldn't really push further. Uh, the map wasn't really wide enough, so that after the opener he couldn't make a lot of use out of his speed advantage. Yeah, I think that's all there is to say. It was... <laughs> those, those planes were just surviving run after run after run. I would have gone mad. This would have, if I was in exposition, you would have, you would have may been able to make another Rasman being salty compilation just out of the single game. But um, yeah, hope you enjoyed this meme of a replay, I suppose. And I'll hopefully see you next time. Later.